Welcome to Taste of Success. Um, I would welcome the alumni on this call to turn on their video. And we'll get started. Welcome everyone and thank you for coming today. We have a great set of alumni panelists here to share their experiences and answer your questions on the topic of nonprofits. We'll get started today by asking each of the, each of the alumni to give a brief overview of their career path and current role. Then we'll open up for questions. For the students on this call, any question is a great question. And if you're asked, thinking about that question, most likely someone else is also thinking about that. So please get ready with your questions. You can put them in the chat or you can raise your hand um, when we get done with the introductions. Without further ado, I'd like to bring Gabriella Cristobal into the space. Welcome, Gabriella. Can you please give us a brief overview of your career journey? Thank you so much, Nancy. I'm so excited to be here with you all today, especially with this format. Um, I think the emphasis on question and answers is great because I remember having a lot of questions when um, I was in school. So uh, my name is Gabriela Cristobal. I use she, her pronouns. And I graduated in 2016 with a degree in political science, international studies, and a uh, certificate in gender and women's studies. And going into those programs, I had seen, you know, a lot, but I really thought you could work on Capitol Hill or you could um, be in the Foreign Service. And I was lucky enough to have a Wisconsin and Washington internship where I got to go and intern for the UN Foundation on their global health advocacy team. And I learned about grassroots advocacy and that really sort of was a moment for me where I was able to pair the internship I had done in the Wisconsin State Assembly with um, some of my other skills and interests and able to say like I really enjoy being that connection between government and the issues that people care about and how policy shows up for their lives. I didn't necessarily want to be somebody who worked on a campaign forever. I wasn't sure how I felt about Capitol Hill and by exploring everything that really was out there, um, I was able to really find what was interesting for me. So after graduating, um, I will say upon graduation, I did not have a job. It took me a few months um, to find one. And I'm sure that that is something that's creeping into the back of a lot of your minds as well. So I will say it takes a while, especially as someone who hires in the nonprofit space now. Um, there's definitely a little bit of a, of a gap just because there isn't the same hiring timeline. Um, but I did end up going back to the UN Foundation. I spent about two years there on their global health advocacy team, helping build up that program. And then I decided I really wanted to spend some time working on something a little closer to home, something that I was always trying to bring into every conversation, which was gender. Um, and fortunate enough to end up at United States of Women, which came out of the Obama administration's White House Council on Women and Girls. And now I run all of our organizing, programming, and strategic engagement. Um, and I will say that I loved my time at Wisconsin and all of the academic coursework that I took. And I definitely still use a lot of it. But the thing that set me up to get these jobs and to leverage them and get where I am now has been my internships and my work experience. So I will say that um, I spent a lot of time networking with people through the Wisconsin alumni network by just going on LinkedIn, finding organizations I wanted to work at and connecting to people. People in Washington and in the nonprofit space are very used to just being cold outreach, saying like, hey, I'm interested in the work you do, can we talk? Um, building a network is essential for the nonprofit space, but it doesn't mean that you have to have a deep network. You don't have to have family that's worked in politics or worked in this space. It's really building it for yourself. So I'm happy to talk um, about how to sort of leverage that network, create one for yourself, and, and how I've been able to demonstrate that in a very niche area, um, I was able to do that work. But I will pass it along to the next uh, alumni now as well. Thank you so much, Gabriella. I really appreciate hearing your story and um, having a direct conversation of that scary topic of networking and building connections, because that's often a place that 
students and even myself get stuck in like making that leap and having that direct ask. So I'm sure there'll be questions about that and how you can do that you know, um, in that niche area. Let's turn it over to Jim Lynch. Jim, welcome to the space. Let's hear your story. Thanks for having me. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so I graduated with uh, my bachelor's in communications and public address back in 1991. And at that time, I had no idea in the world what I wanted to do. I knew I had interests. I was always interested, kind of like Gabriella, um, in, in government. Again, whether that was the federal level, state level, local level, I, I wasn't sure. Um, I went and got a master's degree in public policy and administration. During that time, I worked like Gabriella too. I worked for a summer out in Washington, D.C., and that was really helpful. I enjoyed it a lot. It was a great experience, but it also um, was a great experience for me because I learned that about myself, especially at that time, I wanted to be closer to the I wanted to be closer to the local level. And um, so I finished my program and was very interested in education, very interested in public policy. Um, I work now for the State Association for School Principals, and uh, the Association for School Principals and school superintendents were hiring uh, for a director of government relations at that time, and I applied and was lucky enough to get hired, and um, so that was 27 years ago. So I started as a director of government relations, and I stayed in this space for 27 years. I became uh, director of government relations to that for about four years, then I became an associate executive director for the School Principals Association, and now I've been our executive director for um, 13 years, so a total of 27 when you put it all together. And so for, for me, again, I think if, if I believe in a mission and an organization has a role that I feel like um, I can contribute to, it could be a lot of different things, but I think that's where um, I'm at my best. And I, I tell you what, the nonprofit sector for me has been incredible. There, you get to invest in something you believe in. I mean, for me, education. Education is positively correlated with everything we care about, from voting rates to life expectancy to raising a family out of poverty and all those sorts of things. Um, I work for school principals. Research says they have a huge impact. Uh, so, so I get to see the work that I can do really contribute to a lot of things that I care a lot about. Um, I guess one, the advice I always start with, um, I know for me, like I said, you know, uh, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And people always told me, Jim, talk to as many people as you want to. So any anytime you have a project in class, um, reach out to something someone that you think, just like Gabriella said, that is doing work that you find interesting and ask them about what they do. People love to talk about what they do and, and how they've gotten there. Things like internships. Um, I always had to work through school, um, but I, you know, so even though I, I, I always needed a job to, to pay tuition, so to speak, um, looking at, now it's perfect if you can get a paid internship that's really on par, but even if you can't look for to complement those paid experiences with with whether it's unpaid or projects or anything in those areas that you're interested in. Just like Gabriella said, getting to know people in the field, just getting to know whether that's right for you or not, really, really helpful. And it really helps as you think through what might be right for you and uh, open up opportunities in the future. So I'll stop my, my little uh, presentation there. Thank you, Jim. A couple of key points that you have spoke about, and I know Michael put in the chat, Scott, um, uh, internships. We have a site on internships and there's scholarships available for those who need assistance if they go to an unpaid internship. So um, Michael put that in the chat, but also this mission is essential and critical, um, especially the nonprofit world. I know that's guided my career of believing in a mission and wherever I've moved in my career journey. So I appreciate you bringing that part up because it's not spoken a lot. Um, when we look at careers in our journey. So thank you so much, Jim. Let's move yeah. to Graham. Graham, please uh, unmute and welcome to the space and let's hear your career journey. Hi, yes, well, thank you. And hi everyone, Jim, Gabriella, very happy to hear about your stories and excited to kind of share my own. Uh, I had sort of a unique entry into the nonprofit space. I actually worked um, for a corporation for AT&T for about 10 years before I kind of made the big jump. And during that time, I uh, went to the UW, got my bachelor's degree actually in philosophy, and um, 
kind of after that time, I took on some new roles at the company, started kind of moving up. And as fun as climbing the corporate ladder and having success can be, I found that I was really challenged in trying to connect the work I was doing with some greater impact in the world. It felt like no matter how many cell phones I sold for that company, there wasn't going to be <laughs> some uh, positive endpoint really that I could look forward to. So that's what really got me started looking into the nonprofit world. And I realized that this was a space where I could surround myself with people that were really passionate about what they did. and you know, it's a space where the eight hours that you spend each day working isn't the thing that you do in order to live the rest of your life. I really feel like it's part of my life and the way that I sort of express myself. And so I think a nonprofit is a great place to be able to do that. Um, for me, I actually started, I was, geez, late 20s, 29 maybe, when I took a volunteer internship for a place in town here called the Aldo Leopold Nature Center. Um, I was fortunate enough that I was uh, able to transition into a full-time paid role, which is uh, where I learned a lot of kind of my background in nonprofits. I then, about a year and a half later, transferred to an organization called JDRF, which is the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, and I uh, got a lot more kind of national experience uh, in the nonprofit realm there. And then just recently, um, moved over to a place called the USONA Institute um, in Madison, where we're studying, uh, well, conducting clinical trials for the use of uh, psychedelic therapy, uh, specifically psilocybin, in treating depression. And for me, this, this newest role is really this sort of perfect intersection between, you know, science, which is something that I'm really interested in, as well as a, a really direct impact on the world, bringing to to market or to the FDA, a brand new treatment for treating depression is something that I think is incredibly valuable. Um, and so I'm, I'm happy to be a part of that organization. Uh, and my role there and my role throughout in the nonprofit space has been focused on development and fundraising. Uh, lots of parallels to the sales world, which I came from. Um, so it was sort of a, an easy fit in that respect. And in terms of advice, I would just kind of echo some of the things that Gabriella and Jim said. Uh, internships. When you look at uh, a job application for an entry-level job and it says must have experience and you're thinking to yourself what the heck how do I make that happen it's an internship that's how you get the experience for those kinds of positions um, so I, I'm a big believer in it um, and you know a lot of nonprofits have lots of opportunities and even if it's not a formal internship you can also get experience just volunteering lots of places have volunteer programs that you can use to kind of get your foot in the door um, and again get a real sense of is this place run in the way that's you know uh, compatible with kind of how I, I like to work? Is this the mission that I can really you know see myself participating in? Um, and it's just a great kind of all around way to get experience. So that's my life story in short, uh, in a nutshell. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Graham. I appreciate you bringing out the volunteer piece, but I also, what I heard in your story is this curiosity throughout your career journey of just constantly being curious and thinking what, how your job can be part of your life, life part of your work. And not to say that it, there's a life work balance, but I do think there is some synergy in which your beliefs and your energy go towards your job and vice versa. So thank you for bringing that in. And I love the scariness of like volunteering um, for free you know, just to try something out, that's such a big leap, and to see that it, you know, led you to where you are today, so that's exciting. And then this is the time that we open it up for questions for the um, students on the call here. Um, I will lead off with a question, so you can start thinking about one. Please put one in chat or raise your hand. We'll certainly call on you. Um, but our first question for you, for the panelists today are, what are some things you wish you'd known at graduation or nearing graduation um, that you knew or wish you knew at graduation that would have been valuable in your career journey? So a lot of our students are embarking on that and, or still have time. And what would be something that uh, would have been helpful for you or what was valuable for you? I can start off. Um, I will first off say to anyone who's about to graduate, it is okay if you are graduating without a job. Um, I didn't have one. I had a lot of friends that did, and 
like it is okay. You wake up the day after graduation and you are still the same person um, and just as qualified. Uh, especially right now, I think it's incredibly difficult to navigate the job market, especially for recent grads. Um, so I just want to like name that. I will also say something I experienced was a bit of paralysis. I had skills that were almost exclusively transferable from my volunteer work, my internships, my job. And I was like, I could do anything. I could do it anywhere. I have no idea how wide to cast my net. Um, and that sort of, at times, I think, paralyzed me. And then also, I didn't take the time to really apply for the things that maybe made the most sense. I was maybe, or making that connection for myself. I think when you do have that volunteer, that internship experience, a lot of it is really applicable to a lot of things. And for a hiring manager, especially in nonprofits, at least in the space I'm in, we don't have a hiring, um, like HR. So it is me, after I finished all of my work, sitting down, reading everyone's resume and their cover letter. Um, and so the easier you can make it for me to see how working at the front desk at Union South actually connects to you making calls to voters is really important. Can you talk to me about how you planned this event for campus and you got all of these students who had never been engaged with the work that you had done, you had done and how that's grassroots organizing? Um, or you know, a department policy you advocated for to change. You don't have to have all those things, but really, really make it clear to potential hiring managers like how the skills and the things that I know you all have done at Wisconsin are applicable to a job, because I think that really helps give you some focus in applying um, that I wish that I had, had had when I was looking for my first job. Yeah, I would say pretty much ditto to what Gabriella said, and I would just add, just know in your heart, it's all going to work out. It just, um, I, I'm, I think, probably the oldest person on the call today, and as you get older, you just realize things, things work out when you stay at it. And so, like Gabriella said, if you don't find, you know, the perfect thing right away, that's okay. Um, just know, but don't be paralyzed. I think that was a great, a lot of times, we just get too anxious about, boy, yeah, a friend of mine has a perfect job. I'm really struggling. But don't let that paralyze you in terms of I'm going to stop looking. I'm going to settle for this or whatever. It's fine to, quote, unquote, settle for something because we all need to pay the bills. But continue to do that. Continue to volunteer. Continue to talk to people. Continue to network. And, you know, whether it happens in a week, six months, a year, or three years, it will work but just stay at it and don't give up, don't get freaked out, but just stay, stay with it, Do, you know, control the things that you can control and, and things will absolutely work out. That would be the thing I wish I would have known back then. And I'll, I'll just uh, echo and uh, enhance here, but uh, I, I would say that, yeah, consistency kind of is key, uh, whether it's on a job search or, you know, networking, even when you have a job that you love and you're really excited about continuing to talk with people and seeing what's out there because it's impossible to predict what sort of opportunities might come your way uh, when you're just really observant and kind of taking in everything that you can, whether it's you know about a new opportunity, a new organization, or just getting to know people. Uh, there's lots of interesting folks out there that like to, to share and there's a lot to learn. Um, so I think just maintaining connections consistency in doing that is really important. And for those of you looking for jobs and, and maybe feeling a little perplexed or anxious about it, I would say that one really interesting thing about the time that we're living in right now is that the possibilities for remote work have grown exponentially over the last year. And so if you've been looking locally in maybe the Madison area, and you haven't really found anything that you've been really pulled in by, I think expanding that search to the states, to a couple of different states, um, is a smart and much more realistic option these days. Because I think even as we kind of return to normal and folks get vaccinated and start going back into the office, there's still going to be a huge amount of either partly remote or purely remote work that just wasn't a reality before. Um, and so I think that's a reason 
maybe to be hopeful or a silver lining of sorts. Um, there will be a lot more opportunity out there, but a lot more competition too. So make sure you're keeping your eyes open and taking advantage of every opportunity you can. I have a ton of questions, students, but if you have something, please put it in chat or raise your hand or unmute. Um, you have three great alum here, that alumni that would love to connect. And you can, I assume, can connect with you via LinkedIn. Um, Mike put in chat um, the access to our panelists today. So you can feel free to connect and have further conversations. I do agree that um, it's really looking at your job skill sets or volunteering or do you plan an event with your student group? What kind of roles, responsibilities can translate to that first role? Um, but that's what I do when I look at resumes and I try to look at the next hire. It's like, okay, what are their um, skill sets they have? Can they transfer them to the current role that we're looking for? Um, and you receive a lot of those in student group projects or um, in other classes. And success works can help translate those skill sets with you. So advisors or myself or Mike, who's on the call, can help you make those, that leap and help translate those. And we have excellent resources on our website too. My next question is that I'm always curious about what are the most rewarding or satisfying parts of your work? And on the flip side, what are the most challenging parts? Well, in the nonprofit space, um, you know, you get to work in something you believe in. And so for me, I always tell our members who are school principals, um, you know, you get to see your students every day and you get to um, go home at night knowing you've worked really hard to have an impact on those kids. And the only way I get to know that I've had an impact on those kids when I've when I've done something to to make to, to support you in your role, um, but that's it. Getting the feedback of hey Jim, when the association did a, I'm telling you what that made a difference because here's what impact that had for our students. Those you know those are the days and when you review the data um, that it's really rewarding. Um, I will say very similarly, um, I live in, well, I live in New York right now, but previously it was based out of DC and uh, I did not realize I loved Wisconsin so much until I left and getting to work with a network of grassroots advocates across the country, these women who are doing amazing things um, throughout the country is absolutely the best part of my day. It definitely keeps me grounded, it keeps me passionate and I like to be that person behind the scenes really helping all of these other people shine. Um, I will say one of the challenges, which also has been really quite honestly helpful for my career is how fast paced um, the work I do is. Um, both the nature of doing advocacy is very rapid response. For example, President Biden spoke about um, gun reform today and something that we had been planning to do in about a week went up in about 15 minutes. So a lot of times I am very quickly working to pull things together um, and, and we're a nonprofit, so we only have so much funding. So, you know, it's not necessarily my job description, but after this, I'm going to go update our website and then I'm going to do all these other little things. Tonight, I'll be writing thank you cards to donors. Um, and I've been able to really grow my skill set and see my career on a trajectory that I hadn't originally thought when I graduated, but it definitely is a full, full-time job. And, and while it is rewarding, it also does blend a lot of like my personal and professional life. Um, it's something that I really enjoy, but it's definitely not something that I expected when I first got into the nonprofit space. Yes, and I think this um, experience of kind of wearing many hats and uh, doing lots of different things is probably pretty common across a lot of nonprofits, especially, you know, smaller local or regional organizations. I think you find that in a lot of roles, you're kind of bouncing between what might otherwise be areas of specialty. Um, 
you know, you, you find that being a generalist is really helpful in a lot of cases at a nonprofit. So I, I would agree with that as well. I think one of the most rewarding things about the work is when you, when you kind of, I guess, achieve a, a long-term project or, or maybe a big goal, whether that's a fundraising target or you've actually now spent the money and you're seeing the kind of effects or impacts that your program is having, and then being able to share that back with the donors who supported you. I think that's probably one of the most fun kind of conversations that I get to have is to demonstrate, like, look at all the good work that we did together. And, you know, this was really only possible because of your support and, you know, the support of everyone that's involved. And I think, you know, at at and I never got to do that. <laughs> and I, th I think at a lot of kind of jobs that I considered previously, you don't really get to have a lot of those conversations. And so that's been a, a real joy, I would say, in the field. I think one of the challenging things on the opposite hand is, you know, that the generalizing that you do and, and kind of bouncing between those roles makes you want to go crazy sometimes. Uh, it, it feels like you've got a lot of plates spinning kind of all at once and it can be overwhelming. So being really well organized uh, is super helpful, whether it's just, you know, punching time in a calendar for specific tasks, um, you know, planning ahead as much as you can, uh, you know, the projects that you're working on, um, you know, and making sure people are updated and you're kind of communicating really clearly where you're at with things um, so that they can respond really quickly to you when you need them are, are all really helpful in, in sort of addressing that uh, sometimes very chaotic environment.